All right, so this is maximizing Sirius XM marine weather on a Garmin display. Uh, if you intended to show up for some other webinar and this is not your webinar, uh, please just go back and register for another web, uh, webinar. Um, that's SiriusXM.com forward slash marine webinars. We'll get you to the master list and scheduling registration for webinars. SiriusXM.com forward slash marine webinars. Um, and for any of you on the call who do have fish mapping, uh, do recognize that fish mapping uh, comes with uh, offshore weather, which is our highest tier of weather. So uh, without further ado, uh, I would recommend that everybody grab a pen and paper. There may be some, uh, some things you want to take down, some notes. Um, we will try to keep this to about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. We will be recording this session for anybody who's having difficulty uh, hearing or just wants to watch it again at your leisure. We will record it and we'll send it to everybody who registered for the webinar tonight. In addition, we will send you a whole series of how-to videos that Dan and I have created uh, on weather. So you can, at your leisure, see each individual feature and understand a little better how to use it. What Dan and I have found through the years is that even if somebody is a weather subscriber and been using weather for years, typically one of these webinars will, will teach them something new that they didn't even realize they had. So. That is the goal of this presentation. All right, so I'm Jeff Leach. Uh, also with us from SiriusXM is Dan Dickerson. We're both, both based out of the uh, Washington DC office. I am specifically Marine and Dan covers Marine and aviation. And then we're uh, really pleased to have John Spittle from Garmin. John is the uh, training manager for Garmin and does all of their uh, trainings and is a really valuable resource. John, you with us? I am. Thanks, guys, for having me along tonight. Super. Thank you for joining. All right. And uh, there's Bill Platt. Unfortunately, Bill, we can't hear you. So, um, so we'll connect with you later. Thank you for your time. All right. So what makes SiriusXM weather different? Um, this is up-to-date graphical weather shown directly on your chart plotter. Uh, and it is complete coverage. It is not cellular based. It is not an app. It's not internet based. This is coming directly from the Sirius XM satellites. And if you can look at this screen on the right hand side, the coverage area, the light blue shaded area is roughly our coverage area. And, and that's roughly about 150 nautical miles that it extends offshore. Um, so remember, this comes in directly via our satellites through a weather receiver. And we're going to talk all about that. All right, so this is what the home screen of Garmin looks like. So you, you get there by going to charts and then we're gonna start with precipitation and we're gonna literally run you through each one of the screens uh, as it shows up, each one of the features as it shows up on your chart plotter to try to make this as simple as possible. First, you start by clicking the menu button. And then when you click on the menu, you'll get these weather options. So we recommend as soon as you turn your, your chart plotter on, after you subscribe to the service, checking out the weather subscription tab. What this will do is show you what you're subscribed to. So in this particular case, we're subscribed to Marine Offshore tier, which is our highest tier of service. It shows all the features, features down here in the list. And then it shows when the data was received excuse me, it shows when the data was updated and then it, when it was actually received on your chart plotter. Now, why is this important? Sometimes it could take up to 20 minutes to get information on your chart plotter from the satellites. Um, so you wanna come over here and just pay attention. Hey, how come I'm not seeing any weather radar on my screen right now? Well, weather radar may not be showing up yet. Um, and so you can see the actual timestamp of when that's come in. If you are not receiving anything after 20 minutes, you may want to check your signal strength. It's this right here. John's going to talk us through that in a, in a little while. Um, but that is your signal strength. And typically, you want three bars of signal. So really, a lot of that is contingent on where you're putting your antenna and making sure it has clear view of the satellites. All right, our data is aggregated from our partnership with the Weather Channel, or TWC. Um, they pull information together from NOAA and from other sources and then give it to us and then we pipe it up to our satellites and then broadcast it down to your boats. All right, so now we're going to go through each of the individual features. Again, go to menu. We're going to go to observe. So this is not forecast. This is the up-to-date weather. So we want to click on observed. 
observe layers. And the first layer there, you're going to notice the green bar next to it. That means it's active. That's the storm layer. Right next to storm, you see this drop down bar. Anywhere you see one of these drop down bars are this menu. That means there's a sub menu. So if you click on that, you'll see in this particular case, we've selected radar and clouds. We've left off lightning and hurricane. And here's an example of what it looks like on your screen. We recommend turning the loop on. This is the animation feature. And so what you'll see then is how that precipitation or how that storm front pans or animates across your screen. By the way, I may not have mentioned this, but because everybody is muted, we are gonna take questions via chat. So if anybody has any questions about the section that immediately preceded, please go ahead and uh, chat your questions and that's how we'll answer them throughout. So Dan and I and John have put in several slides like this for just pausing and answering questions. So if there's any questions on whether radar or the setup uh, or the subscription, go ahead and chat those and uh, we'll, we'll answer. Um, Dan, did you see any chats? That yeah, no questions yet. I uh, did, did want to mention, just back up for one slide for a moment, Jeff, sure. and, and taking a look at the uh, the weather information that we're seeing here. Um, uh, as you probably figured out, the, the different colors uh, signify the intensity of the, the precipitation. And you'll see the lightning bolts. We're, we're identifying where lightning strikes are occurring. Um, those are strikes that happened within the last uh, 15 minutes. So if a strike is more than 15 minutes old, then the, the uh, bolt will disappear from the screen. So these, these are strikes, you know, as they're happening and they update about every two or three minutes. So you'll see them uh, appear and disappear. And, and actually, if, if you've watched it for a while, you can, you can kind of see which way the worst part of the storm is going by also watching the lightning bolts. Uh, it, the thing about lightning bolts that's interesting is the, the, the coverage area of lightning extends farther offshore than radar does. Uh, the, the next rad radar realistically only reaches about 150 miles and at 150 miles out, it's only seeing what's very high up in the sky due to, due to the curvature of the earth. Uh, a storm that has lightning, you can see it in the middle of the Atlantic coming toward you. Um, so it, 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 the range on lightning extends much farther than radar does. Great. And there was a one question about a specific chart plotter. We will get to that uh, as far as exactly what the weather receiver uh, compatibility is. So we'll get to that a little further. John will cover that for us. All right, Dan, you want to grab control and okay. give you control if you don't have it already? So next, we're going to talk about sea surface temperature. So if you select the sea surface temperature button, what you're going to see is your normal chart screen is going to come back up and we can bring up our menu. Um, here again, we want to select observed in the layer mode. This is a toggle switch that toggles back and forth right here between observed and forecast. And sea surface temperature is a current uh, weather product. So it's going to be under the observed layers category. So once we've selected the layer mode observed, the, the button, the top button will then say observed layers and we select it. And here we go in and turn on our sea surface temperature. You can see the green bar appears. So we know that the, the data is live and we can also tell because now the color is shown up on screen. Any place you tap the screen, where there is a color, it's going to give you the readout of the sea surface temperature. So you can see where it's tapped. We've, we're at 77 degrees right there. So next, we're gonna shift things down a little bit. I've moved a little bit further south and you can see we're at 79.5 degrees. But one of the things that the people like most about our sea surface temperature information is being able to find a temperature break. Well, here in Florida, uh, when I took this screenshot, you can see that there's not much color variation. There's a, a little bit of a temperature break there. There's a little bit of a temperature break there. You can barely make it out. Uh, but there is a way to identify those temperature breaks better. We go to our menu and go back to see surface temperature where you, again, have a drop down menu you can go to. So here, what we're seeing is under sea temperature, an upper limit and a lower limit. And right now they're just set at the defaults of 32 degrees for the lower and, and 99 for upper. 
Well, if I change those, so here now you can start to see temperature breaks. I've changed the temperature ranges from 50 up to 50 from the lower limit and down from 99 to 85 for the higher limit. And you can see those temperature breaks start to appear. But Garmin actually does an excellent job of make it even, making it even easier. So here we've moved down to Isla Mirada and you can see again, the water is almost all the same color. It's uh, orange to red. So we're looking at practically all the same temperature. But in order to find temperature breaks, what you can do is instead of trying to pick out a temperature range, there's this auto configure button. Simply hit that auto configure button and the unit will automatically adjust the temperature ranges to whatever is in your field of view right at that moment. So it automatically adjusted to 79 for the lower and 82 for the higher. And now you can really see where the temperature is changing down to tenths of a degree. We're looking at 81.5 here, and we're looking at 81 degrees over here. So it really gives you a nice crisp way of showing you that temperature break. Dan, before we move on from temperature breaks, I noticed that there were some sailors and probably some cruisers on the call too in this weather webinar. Uh, if you're a sailor or a cruiser, uh, sea surface temperatures may not be as useful for you as they would be for, let's say, an offshore fisherman who's looking for those breaks where the bait fish stack up. But we have heard from cruisers and sailors saying, I really want to know where the Gulf Stream is. Uh, and the sea surface temperature feature will show you exactly where that is, where that current is, uh, is appearing. Okay, so moving on, uh, the next feature we're going to talk about is, is weather station and buoy information. So uh, once again, going to the menu and selecting weather stations, you have these black disks that show up on screen. And right here, they've got a, a picture of a cloud or a sun or a sun in a cloud uh, showing up. And then there are also some little yellow buoy symbols. These are all weather reporting stations that are reporting back to, to NOAA and National Weather Service. And we're able to capture that information and pass it along to you. The way that works is you can simply click on one of those symbols and it's gonna bring up a window that's gonna show you all of the information that that particular station is recording. So here we can see that the, the water temperature at this buoy is 82 degrees. And that's not a forecast, that's when I got it, it's actually, you know, this is an old slide you can see, but that was the actual time and date that that temperature had been reported. And the same applies to the, uh, the weather station information. So in addition to giving the information to you that way, Another feature that Garmin has built into these units is more of a quick reference. Uh, again, you can go back to the menu and under weather stations, there's a sub menu. So we go here to the sub menu and we have a long list of items. And right now, what we're looking at on screen is conditions, meaning the weather conditions. So it's cloudy here, it's sunny further south. If I select winds instead, now we see all of those reporting stations at a glance are telling us the wind speed and direction. And offshore buoys that have wind sensors are included in that. So this is showing us the speed is, is five knots out of the east. Down here, we still see a buoy symbol. That's because that particular buoy at this time is not broadcasting the wind speed information. You can still click on it and get all the other details that the buoy is able to supply at this time, just no wind. Next, we talked talk about marine warnings. Uh, a lot of you have listened to VHF and, and heard the, uh, the warnings come across on the VHF. Uh, this is basically a, a, an easier way to, to know what's going on out there. Uh, and I saw some questions that we're gonna get to about uh, alarms and so forth, but this is basically one of the alarm features is to just have this warnings turn on. And if the weather service uh, broadcasts a warning for a, spe a specific area, they will draw this red shaded block in that area. And you can simply click on that. And then you've got the uh, button that appears at the top of the screen and you select it and it will give you the information right there on screen. So you don't have to listen to the VHF radio to get this information. You can simply read it at a glance and see uh, how critical it is. 
All right. All right. So any questions here? How do you turn on storm and lightning alarms? John, you want to field that one for us, the, the, the alarm features? Sure. So if you're when you're on your Garmin GPS map series, if you go to the home button and you select settings, you'll see a sub menu pop up and then um, fourth down there will be alarms. And then at that point, you can see another menu pop up and it's going to be weather. So at that point, you can pick, uh, you know, to turn on marine weather, tornadoes, severe storm, and those alarms then can turn on. So I'll go, I'll go back through that again. It's settings, alarms, weather, and then turn it on, on and off uh, five different selections there on the weather alarm page. All right, a couple more here, Dan. I'm particularly interested in seeing wind overlay forecast, forecasts out three to four days by hour. Want to field that one? Sure. Uh, we're going to cover that later on in the seminar. Um, but uh, we don't go out uh, three to four days. We only go out 48 hours. Sirius XM is keen on giving you current weather information because it's delivered by satellite and delivered right away. So we want to show you the conditions that are changing rapidly. Long range information, we leave up to the National Weather Service. So you can bring up an offshore forecast or a coastal forecast and read about it. Uh, but we're not going to do an actual overlay that far off. Uh, so you'll see more, a little bit more about that later on in the uh, presentation. All right, the next question, Dan, is uh, what is the typical minimum distance that the weather data will be displayed? So the minimum distance. Right, um, I, and I believe that you're referring to zoom levels here. And uh, John, I'm gonna need a, a little bit of help from you on this one because it varies with different items. I know that for instance, sea surface temperature if you zoom in more than eight tenths of a nautical mile, then it, you, that information goes away. We feel it's at that point, you wanna be looking at the chart and you wanna be seeing what's there. Um, weather radar, I don't remember the, the scale range or if, if the radar disappears at any point. Okay, I think we covered the questions, but good, good ones, keep them coming. Um, and we're happy to stop along the way. In fact, we've got several other spots where we can um, Stop and answer your questions. All right, <clears throat> let's keep going. All right, now we're gonna talk about sea conditions. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about waves. So again, you notice on the wave layer, there is a drop-down menu. So first you click on menu, then you click on wave. It illuminates the green bar on the side. We're gonna go to the drop-down menu. And the first option is wave height. So we show wave height, Garmin shows wave height uh, in a color gradient. So uh, a zero uh, wave height is, is blue in color all the way up to 36 feet of waves, which you wouldn't wanna be anywhere close to is red in color. Additionally, uh, you can touch on screen and see what the wave height is in that particular area. Uh, so it's a simple tap on screen, you'll be able to tell, kind of hard to tell with the, uh, the visual you know, graphical representation. Next, we're gonna click on wave direction. So you see the little red arrows. So in this particular uh, instance, the waves are coming out of the south, pr primarily, maybe a little southeast. And, and now we're gonna talk about wave period. So this is the period between the crest from one wave to the next wave. And in this particular uh, instance, in this screenshot, we're showing the wave is 5.6 feet. We can see it's coming out of the south, southeast. And the periods between waves, here's an example, 9.8 seconds between the two waves. Here's another example, 8.6 seconds between waves. So waves are, wave periods are uh, important for anybody who's been offshore, you know that. Uh, if they're stacked up too close together, it can be very uncomfortable if they're, if they're big at the same time. And then of course, using wave and wind information together, if wind and wave are opposing each other, that can be uh, make it really sloppy and uncomfortable out there. So the next data source we're gonna talk about is wind. First and foremost, again, you go to the menu, click on wind. And what we're showing here, and there's usually a lot of questions on this. So if there's any chat questions, please let us know. These are called wind barbs. And if you turn on the legend, you'll notice that five knots is the small bar, 10 knots is the larger bar. 
and then the flag represents 50 knots. So let's look at a few of these just so people can understand how to actually read or understand wind barbs. All right, so for the sake of the example, you can see a small barb here, a larger one here, so that's five plus 10, that's 15. And then the wind, you can see the wind direction, you know, here with this illustrated blowing this way. So the wind is coming out of the Northeast, heading this direction. Here's another example. This is one uh, barb, so this is a longer barb. This is 10 knots uh, coming directly out of the east. And this is five knots. You see one small barb coming out of the southeast. So if there's any questions on that, we're happy to go back to the screen. We usually get a bunch of questions, just kind of really trying to figure this out. All right, any chat questions on that particular section? Um, we didn't have any questions. There was one on, on that I'll go back to, uh, two questions that uh, I'll, I'll go back to. Uh, the first one was uh, somebody reported on a, on a different brand of electronics. They see a, uh, an arrow denoting the wind, uh, the storm direction. Uh, we call those storm cell attributes. Um, and uh, they, they got dropped out of a, uh, uh, an update uh, by accident and uh, we have uh, asked Garmin to put the storm cell attributes back in. So that's, that's, uh, that feature will be back at some point. Uh, the other question was, uh, is the weather info available on Garmin Zumo GPS? And John, I need you to field that one for me. Sure. So the Zumo was one of our, uh, or is one of our motorcycle GPS units. And you can actually get it. It's a different way that you would actually get weather on that. So that's not the Sirius XM satellite based weather. You would actually have to download an app called Garmin Drive. And then you would utilize your cell phone connected to your Zumo. And then in that point, you can view forecasts, current conditions, animated radar on your Zumo. So cellular based Garmin Drive app send it to your Zumo. So that's really for motorcycles. Okay. Okay. Any, anything else there, Dan? No, that was it. I'll take it from here. Okay, great. Uh, next, we're going to talk about surface pressure. So um, again, select the uh, surface pressure from the menu. And here you have a drop down, And you won't see anything unless you've turned on uh, the features in the drop down. So the first one you can turn on is barometric pressure. Uh, bar barometric pressure will be displayed in millibars or inches of mercury, depending on how you have the settings uh, set up in the uh, Garmin unit. And then next you have your surface analysis uh, information, which is your, your low pressure areas, uh, your uh, troughs and stationary, and we have it showing a warm front here as well. So. That's your analysis information. Next, we're going to talk about marine zones. With the marine zone button turned on, you're going to get these pale blue lines that will show up on your screen. And these represent all of the different marine forecast zones that you, we all used to listen to on the VHF radio. You turn it on and they talk about the weather conditions or the weather forecast in a specific area. And they have to talk about all these different areas. And I know me invariably when they're talking about my area, I get distracted and I don't hear it. And then I have to wait another 20 minutes for it to come back around again. Well, we've made it much simpler. Uh, we've put the zones on screen and you can simply uh, place the tap anywhere on the screen where you want to see the, uh, the weather report. And it's gonna get this bar across the top and you select local weather, and then you'll get these buttons on the side. Uh, and Marine Bulletin is the one that you're looking for. Uh, when you select that, that's gonna give you the bulletin or the, the zone forecast for the specific area where the cursor is. So here we've tapped in. Now, the first thing it's gonna give you is the synopsis, which is the coastal forecast for the larger area. But if you drill down through the pages, you can see where I had that cursor actually on screen was on Buttonwood Sound. So in the keys, it's actually giving me the forecast for that specific area. So you can not only see the forecast for where you are, but you can see the forecast for another area 
at a glance, and that's going to be a uh, several days out, which is the forecast that I referred to earlier. So next, we're going to go look at Sirius XM uh, forecasting in a different sense. So here, we're looking at actual display on screen. Uh, Jeff was just telling you about the wind and wave information. Uh, and I've got it all turned on, all the layers turned on right now. I've got wind, wave, uh, even the barometric pressure information all turned on at the same time. And we can see uh, if we press the menu that our layer mode, we've changed it. It says forecast now, not observed. We've toggled it to forecast and we've got the top button that says forecast layers. And as I said, we've turned on all the layers that are available and you can see it says now. So this is giving us current weather conditions at this time. But what we have is these other two buttons up in the corner. And if we select the right arrow, it's gonna change from now to, <clears throat> excuse me, to 12 hours out. So this is how the weather is going to be changing and what it's expected to be 12 hours from now at this location. So we can see it's, we got some 10 footers out there, um, 10, 10 second swells, nine second swells, uh, not too bad, our wind's 10 knots here. Uh, so just big waves. And over here, probably the cause of those big waves, we got you know 25 knot winds showing up over here out of the south. Click on the button again. Now we're looking at 36 hours out and it's changed. It started that the waves are a little smaller. The winds died down a little bit, shifted around a little bit. Uh, and as Jeff was referring to, you can see here the wind is out of the west, but the waves are from the south. So it's going to be choppy out there. You've got opposing wind and wave going on right there. And here we're, we've gone to 48 hours out, which is the maximum range that we do for this type of projection at a glance. So next. I'd like to talk a little bit about where all of this weather information is available. We have the dedicated screens that are on the unit when you set it up for precipitation forecast, sea temperature, and so on. However, the uh, nav chart and fishing charts allow you to overlay weather on those as well. So your actual navigation chart, you can go into the menu there and turn on weather functions so you can see it at that location. Now, anyone that's on the call that, that is a fisherman and is that, it, that is looking at or is using our fish mapping service, you cannot overlay weather onto the fishing, fish mapping program. That's strictly just fishing data, nothing else. Uh, you can do split screens like I have set up here. I've got fishing charts and fish mapping. So the fishing chart could have weather information and be giving me bathymetry information at the same time as looking at other fishing details. Uh, and then over here, I've got a forecast and SST set up by example. And of course, there's always, we don't like to uh, leave out the Sirius XM radio functions. Your media button, uh, the Sirius XM receiver is also capable of bringing in the Sirius XM audio uh, and, and you can listen. Uh, you can pair it to just about any stereo. Uh, here I'm showing it set up with a Fusion. Uh, the, uh, the GXM54 basically brings in the audio and then you can control uh, from either the Fusion or the MFD on the boat. And John, we get a couple of questions about setting up audio and how to do that. So um, I was wondering if you might just, you know, walk people quickly through some of the, the menu function on setting up how to get audio out of that media selection. And I, we've already, it's, it's showing up on screen here. So it gives you the prompts to uh, how you would select that. Did I lose John? John's on mute. Unmute yourself, John. All right. Okay. So there's, I'll, I'll fill in. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's two things to know. There's two types of receivers. Hello. Hello. There he is. There okay, he I'm is. sorry. I, I was my functions <laughs> was locked out there for a second. All right. So yeah, you want to you want to cover how to well, go, go, audio? go yeah. ahead, Dan. 
Okay, all right. So there's two ways to get audio in. The GXM54 can do music, or you could have a separate Sirius XM tuner. If you have a separate Sirius XM tuner, you change channels only from the stereo. If you're using the GXM54, over here on the Garmin screen from your source, you have to select the GXM54. Um, so you, you hit that source button and you have two choices. It'll say Fusion or whatever other stereo you might have. And it'll say GXM54. If, you're, if your music subscription is to the 54, you have to select the 54. And then you can control your audio from your MFD and, and it'll pipe out through your speakers. And by the way, if that's confusing, we are going to give both our contact information, John's contact information, and, and we're happy to be a resource to help guide people through this. All right. So let's go to the next slide. John, you want to cover this one? If you're not muted, you are muted, John. Okay, I'm back. It's taken away my unmute privileges sometimes. Okay, okay. so um, on the Garmin uh, GXM54, it's $799.99 through Garmin itself. And then uh, Sirius XM is offering the $100 rebate. That runs through December 31st of this year. When you, you'll get a hundred dollar rebate back when you actually subscribe to Sirius XM Marine Weather or Fish Mapping subscription, and then maintain that for sixty days. So remember, we're the we're the hardware guys. So you're going to utilize a Garmin GPS Map Series is your multifunction display, and then your fifty four antenna along with the audio and power module that you see on the lower right hand side will then connect to your MFD. So that now connects through ethernet and then into the bottom of the GPS uh, Sirius XM antenna. And then you'll also see the two RCA jacks. That's what will connect to your external um, stereo. For instance, the Fusion 770 that we were showing you there. And then you've got complete control through your Garmin MFD. That's right. And if anybody questions where to get the rebate, we do approve quite a few of these on a regular basis at SiriusXM.com forward slash marine rebate. We'll give you all the details needed to uh, qualify. And we simply just send you a $100 Visa gift card. Pretty straightforward. All right. Next, did want to let anybody know that is a brand spanking new subscriber that for new subscribers, we have a two month trial. Uh, this is on our coastal tier of weather. So our coastal tier is our mid tier. Offshore tier is the highest tier. Um, and uh, you, can, you can find the marine offers at SiriusXM.com forward slash marine offers. There is a dedicated, it's important to note this, that there are some dedicated numbers for the marine and aviation div division. Oftentimes we get people that just look up SiriusXM, the big giant radio company, our, our brethren out there that are running the radio, uh, and they call the one general 1-800 number and maybe speaking to somebody overseas that doesn't even realize there is a marine and aviation division. So we encourage people to call the specific number listed here. Um, there's a few different 1-800 numbers. We'll give you that number again in just a minute. All right, the tiers, the weather packages and fish mapping. First is the coastal tier, that's $35 a month. Uh, the offshore tier, it's $60 a month. The real difference between these is the forecasting is further out on the offshore uh, tier as well as sea surface temperatures uh, go further out beyond 24 nautical miles. Uh, and, and, the, um, and the offshore weather feature uh, is uh, up to what, 48 hours, correct, Dan? Yeah. And then fish mapping, of course, is for dedicated uh, anglers. Anybody who wants to fish offshore, that comes with the entire suite of weather services. Of course, uh, if you add to the same subscription uh, a marine radio or a Sirius XM radio, it comes at a discount. So roughly 30% discount um, when you add our entertainment packages. Did wanna let people know, I know there's some people on this call that are from the Northern latitudes and or people that um, are not using their boat for a period of time or have their boat up in the hard doing maintenance. We highly recommend seasonal suspending. If you're not using your service, there's no need to pay for it. 
simply call in, tell the call agent you want to seasonally suspend. We allow you to do that for up to six months. And the magic of it is it more or less just holds your account in escrow and then actually gives your system a wake up signal, pings your system, gives it an activation system or a signal whenever you say that date within six months. That way you don't have to call and reactivate. Uh, you don't have to pay a reactivation fee. Um, you don't have to deal with any of that. So seasonally su suspending is, is an important thing to do. All right, it looks like there may have been a few questions there. Um, Dan, you wanna answer this one? Is Coastal all one would need for the San Juans in British Columbia? Absolutely. Yeah, basically, the, like I said, Jeff, the, the only difference between the coastal and offshore packages, though, or the main difference is sea surface temperature with the coastal package, the sea surface temperature stops 20 miles from shore. And then the forecasting with the coastal, you get the current conditions. Uh, you just don't get the extended 48 hour forecast conditions. You do get the forecast off of the marine zone reports, uh, just not the, the uh, graphic forecast information. So I would say yes, coastal would suit you very well. Okay. And then when we're done this next section and get closer to the end, let's go back and talk about wind. There was a couple wind jack questions that we can take in just a few minutes. All right, uh, John, back to you, buddy. Okay, if we wanna go ahead and activate the, GP, the antenna itself, we're gonna go into settings and then it'll go system, system information, software information. From this page, you can do a couple different things. Number one, we can make sure that our 8616 has the most current software version, but the other is our Sirius XM weather radio ID. That's what we're gonna need to get our subscription started. So you see that number right there. You can also flip our GXM54 upside down and look on the bottom, that number ID will be on the bottom of that also. That's on the bottom of the antenna, right, John? Correct. Yep. On the bottom of the antenna. On the top right hand side there, you're going to see two graphs that are going to show you the signal strength. The first one you're going to see there is for the GXM 54 weather. So you're going to want to have at least three bars to get good weather information. So make sure you move that around the vessel before you actually mount it. Uh, we we include the um, surface mounting option or a pole mount. Um, you'll want to make sure that you know you have that in an area where you're going to pick up good signal strength on the vessel itself. It, you don't want it in the same plane as a radar. So you want that preferably above the plane of a radar if you have it on board, or you can go below it. And then that's the same with the VHF radio. And you want that at least um, three feet away from those antennas. So just kind of make, make sure that you mount it in the proper location. I talked earlier about the software version. Make sure that you're running the most current software in both your MFD and in your antenna. And we'll show you how to actually look that up too on here. Garmin software updates. This is our main landing page for our software updates. You can update your software on your Garmin GPS map series unit, either through Active Captain, Garmin Express, or you can manually download it. And this is the page that'll get you to that point. And then that allows you to go ahead and update. It also allows you to look and see what the change history or version is in your GXM54. And the most, the, the latest update came out January 7th. And we're at 3.00 is the latest software version. Remember, when you're actually connecting together, um, I, I generally like to go in and go to that settings, communication, and marine network, because remember, it's Ethernet. So in this example, you'll see my 1243, my 8612, and my GXM54, and I am running the latest software version on all three units. When you do update the 54, make sure that that is powered on. That might be powered by a separate key switch or switch. So just make sure that that's powered on when you're doing your software updates. All right, thanks, John. And then for those of you who have not activated yet, of course, it's important to have compatible hardware. So you need the GXM54, 
compatible display, choose your subscription package, and then visit SiriusXM.com forward slash Marine Activate or call this number again, a dedicated number that'll get you to the Marine and Aviation Division to subscribe. All right, I know there were several questions and keep the questions coming. Um, we'll stick around and make sure that we have some answers here for you. Um, okay, there was a question about fish mapping and I'm not exactly sure what that is. We have a dedicated webinar dedicated to fish mapping that will be on our resource pages. I'll tell you all about that in just a minute. Um, Question for John about a, an older unit, a 7608. Uh, it, if they update the software, will they see the new buttons? Um, I'm, I'm guessing the, the, the buttons that we're showing on screen. Correct. So the layout menu on your charts, yes, you will see that on the 7608. Yeah, I believe it was the January update that changed a few of the buttons around. And then John, a specific question, can it be mounted next to my C-Star antenna? This is used for Optimus steering. Yeah, that's a GPS antenna. So generally what you'll see is most boat manufacturers, boat builders will mount those on the opposite side of either a hard top, try to get them away. Like I said before, you want about a three foot distance between those antennas. Okay. All right, keep the questions coming. We still there was got a some question. Time. Yep. Uh, ahead, what what shows up at twenty five knots in re reference to the wind? And I think we we probably covered it on the forecast page. But basically, there are two long marks and one short mark designate the the twenty five knot winds. Okay, great. Uh, John, specific question for you: Does the Garmin eighty six twenty two have a card reader? If not, how do you use Active Captain? And we may want to take that one offline unless you can provide a, a brief description. I can do a quick, brief answer on that one. Okay, so good. We make a separate card reader that would plug into that, allowing you to then uh, activate an active captain card and then connect wirelessly with your smartphone or tablet. Okay. So you need a separate external card reader. Or if you did have another Garmin multifunction display on the network that had a card reader and they're networked together by eth Ethernet, you can then designate that other chart plotter on your boat as your active captain chart plotter. Got it. Thank you, John. All right, we're going to continue to move along here. And this is where it might be a useful place to have a pen or snap a picture. Again, we will send you this webinar recording out uh, in the next few days. Um, but here are some resources, some valuable resources. Um, the main website is SiriusXM.com forward slash marine. We have a dedicated video library. So when you go to this video library at SiriusXM.com forward slash marine library, go to Garmin tab and you'll see all the how-to videos and other resources there. Or if you just wanna visit our general YouTube channel, this is where we have playlists and various videos, um, several of which are educational in nature. And that's youtube.com forward slash SiriusXM marine. We'd be thrilled if uh, people wanted to join us on our social media sites facebook.com forward slash SiriusXM Marine or at SiriusXM underscore Marine. Uh, always great to have followers and, and people um, joining us in the chat. Before we forget, um, we do, for anybody who's an angler out there, we have uh, partnered with a company called the Dolphin Fish Research Program. For those of you who are fishing out there, you know how prolific uh, mahi are but also how uh, often we as anglers don't always think about how many mahi we're, we're harvesting. So um, we're encouraging everybody on this call to, uh, who is an angler to sign up to get a free tagging kit so that we can uh, increase the knowledge um, and the database of tagged, uh, released and tagged dolphin fish, which really helps understand the migratory nature of mahi species. So. There's free tagging kits for anybody who's interested can be found at dolphintagging.com forward slash tags. So thank you for supporting that effort. And then last but not least, if anybody has any technical questions for Sirius XM Marine, you are having a hard time getting signal, you're having a hard time connecting, whatever the questions are, marine.support at SiriusXM.com. Those go directly to Dan. Um, so marine.support at SiriusXM.com. Email us there or email Dan there. And then marine.training at garmin.com. John, that goes directly to you, correct? <laughs> yes, myself and a couple of the other team members it'll go to. Excellent. And tell us the 1-800 the number, who that goes to. 
Yeah, so that's our main product support line, 1-800-800-1020. So I did see a question in the chat. I can never get my active captain to link. So that's probably a better, uh, we can better answer that through our 1-800 number. So make sure to call that, get in front of your uh, GPS along with your, your phone or your tablet, and we can walk you through connecting your phone to your chart plotter and getting an active captain up and running. We do have a lot of great videos out there. You can go to our support page at Garmin.com or just go to the Garmin YouTube channel and you'll see a lot of the support videos that show you about Active Captain and software updates and so forth.